become interested in music and kind of singing songwriting how early did that start and kind of how did your journey through music and and singing and songwriting become about um I think I grew up in a kind of small town vibe um, in Dorset, South Coast, um, a place called Wimborne, where the music scene was predominantly folk music in pubs. Um, And there was like one or two music venues that sadly aren't there anymore. But I think I was kind of one of the last generations before social media was the the big media that, uh, that people would watch. So it was still... Uh, sort of watching music videos on on TV. That's what really initially got me into music. That paired with my dad playing kind of his favourite music in the car on uh, on holidays to France. And I think, yeah, I was that age where there was kind of an influx of pop punk from America. Um, So I had that on one side. Then in the UK, there were bands like Busted uh, that, that were that were really, really prominent when I was sort of age 10, 11 at that real, um, I don't know, influential part of of my life. So I was inspired by them. And then, so I've got the pop punk, I've got kind of the UK pop music going on. And then I was introduced to an artist called Damien Rice, who's an Irish singer songwriter. Um, I got introduced to him when I was 11 by, uh, I, I say girlfriend, I mean, I was 11 years old, so a girl that I liked, uh, which which showed me that this guy. And what really interested me um, in Damien's music is kind of the intricacy of, of his lyricism and the themes that he was speaking about were so far away from kind of the, the pop punk, pretty easy to understand lyrics that bands like Busted or Blink-182 or Good Charlotte were 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 showing so i had this like quite wide spectrum music from quite a young age which meant that um when i started kind of wanting to replicate music i wasn't trying to be um like a a rocky kind of sound like a lot of my peers were at school i was kind of more focused on on my lyrics and ended up kind of doing quite sad depressing songs at the age of like 12 13. um Really, long story short, I got into music through school bands. Um, again, growing up in an area where there weren't too many people of my age making music, it was kind of that thing of like, right, who out of the friendship group can kind of play guitar? Who can kind of play drums? Let's get together um, and and just make horrible noise. That kind of evolved eventually into us writing songs. Um, we started with like the cliche covers like Seven Nation Army White Stripes and would and do that kind of stuff over and over and over. And then we kind of learned a series of chords, started writing songs. Then the other guys grew up and kind of didn't want to do music anymore um, because, again, it was not perhaps the most conventional route for, for people uh, where I grew up to, to go down. There was no one, there were no kind of idols that had come from Wimborne in Dorset, really. I mean, you know, there's like the odd person that mate was in like, I think someone from Blue was from Dorset or something. But like there was no, there was no one doing what I wanted to do that I could look at and say, right, how do I get on that trajectory to end up being that person? What steps can I follow? So really it was kind of shooting in the dark. I carried on doing music solo and then really out of the blue, I got a MySpace message from my now manager um, who said, ironically, I managed uh, Busted, I managed McFly, which bear in mind, as I said before, Busted were quite a big, big part of my my musical kind of discovery. Um, he said, would you be interested in in making a band? And, you know, he, he's this American guy who lived in London and LA and, you know, me being from Wimborne, it, it was just like, you, you sort of have these real visceral moments in life where you're like, they were like really impactful um, kind of like massive moments where things happen. And that for me is probably the, the, the big spark that kind of changed everything. Um, went to London and he said, okay, like I always thought that if you get a, a, a message like that and he says, do you want to make a band? I, You know, it was the era of like X Factor and um, and like One Direction and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, he'll probably just make the band for me and then I'll just slot in and it'll be fine. And he was like, no, like you need to make the band. Um he'll help but it was down to me to find people so i then scoured the internet for people kind of a similar age to me who are into similar bands 
um, to, to try and make a band. Um, and there were dozens and dozens of people that I reached out to, most not interested. Some I met up with and then we just didn't really gel musically. And then in, in the end, I found Brad, our singer, doing an Ed Sheeran cover and he was like 14 or maybe just done 15. And uh, I think we both were at a point in life where we'd done separate uh, music in, you know, we played gigs in pub. He's from Birmingham, so we didn't grow up together. He, he'd done gigs in Birmingham. I'd done gigs in Dorset and whatever. And I think by the time we met was a really nice time because we realized that the opportunity that was presented on the table was something that didn't really come around too often. So that's how I met Brad. And then very quickly, the other two boys were found in the same way. We were on Facebook and YouTube trying to find um, trying to find other, other musicians. And, and then it kind of fell together. And we very quickly from there, we started posting covers on YouTube initially and transitioned to our own music, got a record deal. And, and honestly, it's been like 11 years since then. So something that I'd worked for for a long time, but actually the moment of, of the scales tipping and it becoming something serious was actually in the, in the space of a couple of months, really. 